The baler collects, presses and ties in rectangular bales, grasses and legumes in general, native pastures, cereal straws, such as wheat, soy, rice and other crops previously harvested and raked. Collect. Retractable tines arranged on rotating bars collect the previously raked material, depositing it on the feeding table. Feeding. Two articulated arms guide the material to the pressing chamber. Pressing. Inside the chamber, the material is pressed by a piston into rectangular bales. Tying. When the bale reaches the predetermined size, a mechanism activates the needles that take the twine to the knotters, responsible for tying the bales. Once tied, the bale is unloaded. The baler ties with plastic or natural twine sisal. Collection Height Adjustment Device Flywheel Tractor hitch header PTO carden shaft Jack Hitch unlock cable Collecting tines Collector's copier wheel Wheel right side Collector Feeding table the presser foot adjusting fork carden clutch wheel left side piston piston connecting rod knotter lock bale length adjuster Pressing chamber Knotters Twine compartment Bale packing handles Bales output track Needle support Needles What accompanies the baler? In the rear compartment of the machine there is a plastic packaging containing Operator's manual Kanban opening Rope safety bolts Tractor coupling. For greater ease and safety, choose a flat location to engage the tractor. It is recommended to use a tractor with power from 35 horsepower on the PTO, at 540 revolutions per minute. Approach the tractor, fitting the drawbar to the hitch of the machine. Use the jack to adjust the height of the hitch. Place hitch, pinna and its counter pin, safety lock. Place the carden shaft, coupling the female side to the tractor's power takeoff. Attach the carden chains to fixed parts of the tractor and machine. After coupling, retract the jack to the working position. Place the machine's hydraulic hose in an available outlet at the rear of the tractor. Placing in the working position. Stretch the header rope to the tractor cab. 
start the tractor and pull the rope to release the header lock. If possible, chalk the machine's right wheel and move the tractor forward, with the rope tensioned at the start, until the header moves sideways and locks in the most open working position. Working position The baler leaves the factory properly tested, lubricated and regulated. However, there are certain adjustments that need to be made at the workplace according to the operating conditions. Bale counter. The counter indicates the quantity of bales produced. To reset it, simply turn the knob until you get the zero indication. Counter reset and ready to start work. Bale length. The baler has a regulation system that allows bales from 50 cm to 1.20 m in length to be produced. To adjust the baler to the desired bale length, follow the steps. Adjusting the bale length. Loosen lock, nut out and loosen screw B, of the adjuster. After the desired adjustment, retighten screw B and lock nut A. Adjusting bale packing. To adjust the baling packing, turn the packing handles. By turning the handles clockwise, the bale packing is increased. The opposite happens if we rotate counterclockwise. It is recommended to start the baling with a gap of approximately 2 cm between the bottom crosspiece of the cranks and the base of the baling tunnel. Start baling and observe the compaction of the first bales. Adjust compression as needed. Adjusting the height of the collector. With the hydraulic hose connected to the tractor, lift the pickup. Remove screw B and position it in the hole that ensures a minimum distance of 3 cm between the springs and the ground. Correcting the bale format. A regular feeding of the pressing chamber, with more material on one side or the other, will result in uneven bales. Changing the position of the pin, increases or decreases the volume of material on a certain side of the bale, correcting any irregularity. Pin positioned in the top hole, increases the volume on the right side of the bale, and when positioned in the bottom hole increases the volume on the left side of the bale, such changes affect the depth of penetration of the assembling fork into the press channel. It is also possible to correct the uniformity of the bale, by repositioning the hole for fixing the forks in the handling device. Changing the fork fixing hole to lower it, increases the bale volume on the left side. The reverse increases the bale volume on the right side. Placing the twine rolls. Two compartments are located at the rear of the machine, with a total capacity of eight rolls. The four working rollers are placed in the upper compartment place the rollers leaving the ends of the threads to the top side. The four working rollers must be connected, following the sequence. Take the outside end of roll A and tie with the inside end of roll B, take the end of the roll C and tie with the end of the roll D. Unravel the ends of the twines, interlace the ends. Insert one, end into the other. Tighten the seam securely, hold the splice with your fingers, and carefully squeeze so that the ends do not escape. Place the knot between your palms and rub it. A well-made knot is almost imperceptible, its diameter is practically the same as the thread itself. We recommend prioritizing the use of sisal yarn, as this is a biodegradable material, will not cause problems to the animal, in the event that small pieces of the wire remain in the burden to be used in the treatment, thus avoiding the ingestion of non-biodegradable materials by animals. 
If you still prefer to work with nylon threads, proceed according to the following steps. Interlace the ends. Make a simple knot. Tighten the knot. Trim the ends with scissors. Twine path. The twine path begins through the C-roll, strictly following the path shown in the images above, ending with the twine binding in the needle holder. After this, the twine passes the A-roll, strictly following the path shown in the images above, ending with the binding of the twine in the needle holder. Tires. Check the tire pressure and retighten all wheel nuts between the first 4 and 8 hours of work. Repeat in the first 50 hours. Tire pressures are not necessarily the same. The proper pressure information can be found on the label located just above the tire. In this case 40 pounds per square inch. For this other tire the recommended pressure is 35 pounds per square inch. Presser foot adjustment. The function of the presser foot is to keep the feed uniform and constant. It must press the collected material without restricting the flow of feed. Should be adjusted according to the size and volume of the windrows. To adjust the slope, loosen the two nuts, A and B and reposition them according to the desired slope, then retighten the nuts.
Important. For more information, see page 37 of the Express 5040 Baylor Instruction Manual. Attention, turn off the power takeoff and remove the key from the tractor before making adjustments, lubrication or maintenance on the machine. Keep the maintenance area clean, wet or oily floors are slippery and can be dangerous. Always park the machine on a level surface and chalk the wheels. When replacing screws and nuts, always use the same specification as the originals. Before switching the machine on again, replace all guards. When making certain adjustments to this machine, described in the manual, you will be asked to turn the flywheel by hand. The following is the correct procedure to perform this operation. Loosen the three nuts on the flywheel protection cover. Remove the cover. Turn the flywheel manually, in the direction of the arrow, counterclockwise. Knife sharpening, and adjustment. Loosen the fixing screws of the first knife, located next to the piston and remove the knife. Attention! Handle knives with care not to injure yourself. Loosen the fastening screws of the second knife, located inside the pressing chamber and remove it from the other side of the machine. Attention! Handle knives with care not to injure yourself. Important! Always sharpen the beveled side of the knife. Replace the knives and if necessary, make the following adjustment. To adjust the clearance between the knives, loosen the four screws that secure knife, A. Move knife, A, until the gap between the knives is between 1 and 1.5 mm, at most. Retighten knife fixing screws, A. Flywheel safety device. The safety bolt, located on the flywheel, breaks in the event of overload or the entry of a foreign body during feeding, immediately stopping the machine from operating. Caution. When the safety bolt breaks, the flywheel continues to rotate for some time, even with the power take off. Wait and see if the flywheel is completely stopped before touching it. Afterwards, remove the protective cover from the flywheel, as shown previously. There are three drilling options for placing the safety bolt. When the flywheel is missing the safety bolt, the flywheel will rotate but the rest of the machine will be inoperative. How to replace the flywheel safety bolt Manually turn the flywheel, until the holes where the safety bolt is placed are aligned. Open the access cover and remove the safety bolt, replacing it with a new one, with its nut. The safety bolt breaks if the needles are blocked, immediately stopping the needles from working. Note that after changing the safety bolt, the rest of the machine will start working again. Needle arm movement with broken safety bolt. The safety bolt breaks if the needles are blocked, immediately stopping the needles from working. 
How to replace the needle safety bolt. First, check and eliminate the cause of the bolt break. Make sure the needles are not blocked. Lift the hood. Open the cover and remove the side cover to access the arm system. If it is still there, remove the broken end of the safety bolt from the end of the arm and insert a new safety bolt. See that now the arm moves the needles. Collection safety bolt Located on the cardan flange of the pickup shaft In the event of overload in the collecting, caused by excess power or the presence of a foreign body, the safety bolt will break, immediately stopping the recoil. To access the roll cardan shaft, enter under the machine from the back. Replace the broken bolt and eliminate the cause of the break. Important. To ensure the perfect and safe functioning of the device, use only original screws and fuses. After the exchange, the collector returns to work. Adjusting the pressing piston. The piston has an adjustment system that eliminates any gaps, as we will see below. Any gap can be identified when the roller is far from the top rail. Loosen the larger nut on the roller and turn the smaller nut F so that the roller rises and eliminates the gap. Finally, retighten the larger nut. Adjusting the feeding arms. The function of the arms is to place the material collected from the windrow into the pressing channel, so that the channel feed is uniform and the collision does not occur between the two arms, it is necessary a perfect movement synchronism between them. Procedure for synchronizing the arms. Open the side cover for access to the knotter's system. Open the covers of the upper and lower compartments of the twine rolls. Pass the twine rolls to the bottom compartment. Disassemble and remove the roller separator holder. Remove screw D. Remove the pinion screw E. Loosen screw F. Move pinion E to the left side, until it disengages it from gear L. Using a tapping pin, start removing the hexagonal shaft G, then pull it out and remove it from pinion H. Looking at the machine from behind, place the cranks on both arms in the positions indicated.
refit the hex shaft to the pinion. Then, after removing the protective cover from the flywheel, manually rotate the flywheel until the M measurement is 580 to 600 mm. Looking at the machine from behind, place the cranks on both arms in the positions indicated. Correct position for adjusting the arm with the handle. Move the pinion until it engages the gear. Synchronization performed, replace the hex shaft on the pinion and bearing. Replace screw, F. Replace screw D. Replace screw E. Replace the roller separator. Manually turn the star wheel F, in the direction of the arrow until arm G, is moved forward. Manually, turn the flywheel in the direction of the arrow until the tips of the needles rise 5 to 10 mm, above the press channel so that the adjustment is correct and the needles are not damaged. When turning the flywheel, the piston must move in the direction of bailing compaction. With the needles in that position, remove the screw that secures pinion D to the hexagonal shaft F. Move pinion D to the left side. After the pinion has been shifted, turn the flywheel again in the direction of the arrow, until the piston extends beyond the 20-25 mm needle tips. Measure B. Re-engage pinion D in gear. Tighten the screw that secures pinion D. When the bale is ready, a mechanism fires the needles that cross the pressing channel, passing through the moving piston. For the needles to go up to the knotters without colliding with the piston in motion, there must be a perfect synchronism between the needles and the piston. Adjusting needles with knotters. To ensure efficient binding of the bales and to prevent the needles and the support from being damaged during operation, the needles must be regulated with the knotters. Manually rotate the star wheel F in the direction of the arrow, until the arm G is moved forward, releasing the knotter mechanism. Manually turn the flywheel in the direction of the arrow until the needles reach the knotters. Check the adjustment of the two needles. The first adjustment to be made is between the needle and the retaining disc. There should be a gap of 2 to 4 mm between the lower end of the needle and the retaining disc. Adjusting the needle gap with the retention disc. Loosen the screw with washer E, tighten and loosen the rear screw, and the front screw D, to increase or decrease the distance. Note the variation in needle placement with the retaining disc. Adjusting the needle advance. After adjusting the needles with the retaining discs, adjust the needle advance. To do this, open the knotter cover. Lower and remove the side cover. Manually turn the flywheel in the direction of the arrow until the needles rise to the highest point. The needles will be in the correct position when the crank and the adjustment arm are aligned. 
with the needles positioned at the highest point, measure B, between the needle end and the retaining disc should be from 135 to 140 mm. In the event that the measurement is not within the parameters, proceed according to instructions below. Loosen safety screw P. Loosen the adjustment nut R. Adjust the needle advance using spindle S. Retighten the nut and the security bolt. If measure B is larger than recommended 140 mm, the needle holder will hit the channel pressing tunnel when the needles go up to the noser, damaging the holder. Replace and close the side cover, close the knotter cover and lower the front hood of the machine. Adjusting the distance of pickers with the needles. To facilitate adjustment, remove screw out and lift the knotter frame. Manually turn the flywheel in the direction of the arrow to lower the knotter needles. If adjustment is necessary to obtain the mentioned distance between 2 to 4 mm, loosen the nuts F and adjust the handle by turning the spindle R. Manually turn the flywheel, in the direction of the arrow, to lower the knotter needles. With the needles fully lowered, the M measurement should be 5 mm. To adjust, loosen the two nuts F, and turn the spindle R, until the indicated reference measurement for initial adjustment of 5 mm is obtained. Important. The adjustment must be done with the needles fully lowered, adjusting the two handlers. Lower the knotter and retighten the nuts. Knotter's actuator adjustment. The actuator leaves the factory properly regulated, without the need for any adjustment. There should be a gap between 4 to 5 mm between the actuator and the roller. In case of deregulation, proceed as follows. Manually turn the star wheel in the direction of the arrow until the drive arm engages the roller. Manually rotate the machine flywheel in the direction of the arrow and when the crank and the adjustment arm are aligned. Loosen the screw of the roller, and the two roller shaft supports. Remove the side of the toothed roller, for better adjustment. Move the roller shaft and star wheel until the gap of 1 to 2 mm, between the toothed roller and the actuator teeth is obtained. Replace the roller screws and retighten the bracket screws. Movement of the actuator with the correct gap between it and the toothed roller. Knotter's foot. It is a shaft with a hook-shaped end. Inside it is mounted a mobile component, called tongue. For your verification, loosen the screw A. For fixing the knotter, lift it up and check the situation of the knot's foot, there should be no burrs. Check on two knotters.
Tongue pressure adjustment. The pressure on the tongue is exerted by the flat spring. If there is little pressure, the tongue will not pull the thread and the result will be an incomplete knot. Pressure can be reduced or increased by means of the adjustment nut. If the pressure is exaggerated, the tongue will not release the knot and the thread will break, compromising the binding of the bale. Knife holder adjustment. When lifting the knotter, note that the knife holder arm will move away from the foot to a certain point, when it will begin to approach again. When the arm reaches the maximum distance, the position should be equal to 8 to 15 mm of spacing of the knot's foot. The knife holder arm contains a small cavity at its bottom, which must pass close to the knotter's foot to remove the loop. If there is slack, the loop will not be removed from the foot and the twine will be dented or damaged. Adjusting the retention disc. The retaining disc has four grooves where the twine passes. These fittings must be correctly positioned. If the twine does not touch the groove, it will not be caught between the disc and the retaining clip and will not be cut by the knife. To adjust, loosen the auger nut out. Using a hammer, carefully tap the end of the shaft from the worm side, moving the shaft and pinion upwards. Rotate the dial to obtain the indicated setting. After adjusting the disc, return the screw to its original position, retightening nut out. Adjustment of the retention clamp. The retaining clamp is pressed by two springs against the disc holding the twine. The pressure that these springs exert on the disc is very important. If it is low, insufficient, the twine will slide. If it is exaggerated, the thread will become trapped and the knot will be damaged. It is recommended to start the binding with a 3 mm gap at the end of the springs. Measure M. Adjust the pressure by means of nut P and its screw, loosening and or tightening both. It is recommended to protect the contact surfaces between the springs with a thin layer of grease, thus avoiding their locking. Adjusted the pressure to measure M, retighten nut P. Knotter's knife. To access the knotter's knives, remove screw A, and lift the knotter's frame. It is important to keep the knotter's knives in good condition and sharp. If they are not sharp, remove the fixing screws, and replace. We do not recommend sharpening them. Adjusting the needle's brake. Lower the side cover and remove it to access the brakes. The correct adjustment of the brake occurs when the length L of the spring is the same length as the reference plate B to adjust tighten or loosen nut C. Never apply any type of lubricant to the brake disc. Half moon. Replace the brake element when it shows severe wear. Replace the side cover and close the machine. Adjusting the tension of the binding twines. The ideal compression will depend on several factors, such as type of product, degree of humidity, level of baling compaction, etc. Start work without pressure on the springs. Factory setting. And observe the first bales, adjusting the pressure if necessary, the compression of the springs will determine the proper retention of the bales binding twines. Its adjustment is made through the two nuts B. Friction clutch carton shaft. The function of the frictional torque limiter, clutch, is to protect the mechanisms of both the machine and the tractor. Keep the clutch in good condition, periodically checking the springs and discs. 
we recommend that the manufacturer be consulted, for any need to repair the carton clutch. Lubrication. Regular lubrication is the best guarantee for a significant increase in machine life. Under normal conditions, lubricate the machine according to the information below. PTO Gearbox. How to change the oil. Open the hood. Remove the screw P from the reservoir cover. Accessing the underside of the gearbox. Remove drain Q and allow the oil to drain completely. Replace the Q drain. Remove the level screw. Fill with the recommended oil through the top opening until the oil leaks through the level hole. Replace the level screw. Check the level every 50 hours of work and complete if necessary. To finish, replace the top screw P. Inferior gearbox. How to change the oil. Open the hood and remove the protective caps. Remove buffer R. Remove the drain screw S and allow the oil to drain completely. Replace the drain and fill with the recommended oil through the plug until it reaches this level. Close the cap by retightening screw R. Lubricate all points identified below with grease. We recommend the use of good quality lubricating grease, based on lithium soap, classification NLGI grade 2. Before lubricating, thoroughly clean the grease fittings to avoid grease contamination. A. Cardin crosspieces, maximum interval of 10 hours. B. Cardin tubes, maximum interval of 18 hours. C. Jack spindle, maximum interval of 50 hours. D. Right wheel hub. One grease fitting, maximum interval 10 hours. Left wheel hub does not require lubrication due to the type of bearing. E. Left wheel hub does not require lubrication due to the type of bearing. F. Right fork arm. Three grease fittings, maximum interval 10 hours. G. Left fork arm. Three grease fittings, maximum interval 10 hours. H. Piston rod. One grease fitting, maximum interval 10 hours. I. Needle support. Two grease fittings, maximum interval 10 hours. J. Piston connecting rod. Does not require lubrication, due to the type of bearing. K. Packing cranks. Two spindles, maximum interval 10 hours. L. Bearing of the gearbox. Four grease fittings, maximum interval 20 hours.
Knotter's lubrication points, maximum 10 hour interval. T. Connecting rod of the knotter. One grease fitting, maximum interval 10 hours. Annual overhaul. It is recommended to carry out, preferably at the end of each season, a general overhaul of the machine, identifying and replacing worn or damaged parts. Make sure there are no bent or broken tines in the pickup. Check that the pickup track bearings are in good condition. Examine the transmission gears. Thoroughly examine the knotter, especially the handles, feet, knives and gears. Check the cut of the knives. It is advisable to keep a set of spare knives for use during sharpening. Examine the piston. Check that the needles are in good condition. Cleaning. After the baling period has ended, have the baler cleaned thoroughly. Completely remove the material from inside the machine and wash it with water. Apply a thin layer of oil to the baling chamber and the dosers to prevent rust. Replace damaged or worn parts and lubricate all grease fittings. To increase the useful life of the tires, when the machine is stored, it can be supported on supports and disassembled the two wheels. Store the machine in a suitable place, protected from the weather, sun, rain, etc.